On today's Travel Bites with Liesl81, 8 countries in 11 months, a broad framework. Welcome back again, I do hope you enjoyed the first part of this series. On this episode we're going to be talking about 5 points and we'll dive straight into it. Accommodation, communication and shopping, healthcare, language and activities. 21st October 2020, I flew to Tanzania and 26th of August 2021, I came back to Munich. Let's talk accommodation. On the recommendation point six, we're going to be looking at three options. The first one is Airbnb. Second one is B&B hotels and resorts. And the third one, camping. So for the first one um, with Airbnb, I just literally look for places that I could have to myself or that were BMBs that were on Airbnb. I had two favorite ones. So the one in Arusha, I really liked that one because it was a three bedroom flat and I had it all to myself most times. So that was great. Sometimes there were other guests there and it was still fine. It felt like being at home, you know, like you are on the road. And then there are two Airbnbs that I had in Dar es Salaam, my fancy dancy one that I used quite a bit which you will see if you want to get more information about that one on my video about Dar es Salaam. And then you have the one that I stayed in the last few days before I left, which is with the nuns. Clean, cheap, affordable, safe. Um, I can also recommend that as well. Just to give you an idea of the price difference, I paid there like $12 a night in the room and that would put me at $36 for three nights for the other one, it would have been $120 and towards the end I was like, I'm okay, <laughs> I can do that. We're moving over to hotels, EMBs and resorts. So for the hotels, I did a lot of reading on Google Review and when it comes to reading reviews on Google Review, what I did was look for the latest ones and also the negative ones. I look for the negative ones because I know that there must be some atom of truth in them and I want to be warned about what's going to happen. You know, I don't want to be taken 
by surprise since I already had a negative hotel experience in West Africa. So I was being careful and it worked. I, I read the reviews, I would just, you know, get my pointers on as to what might not work out well. So being able to handle my expectation and then just going ahead and book the ones that I felt were good. Most times I also booked via booking.com if it was available and if it gave me a, an advantage. Otherwise I did walk-ins if I, if I didn't find them on booking I did walk-ins so I used booking.com and Airbnb quite a bit or I walked into the hotel. Resorts. I stayed in two resorts not because I'm a resort person but I was uh, at one with some friends um, that I actually met traveling Zanzibar. We went to a resort with her family and friends at uh, Diani Beach. It was really nice, Baba Beach Resort. I love it. And the second one was in Watamu, nothing to write home about. But those were both my resort experience. And then coming to point three, camping, yay! So for the first time I really ever camped, I was worried. I was worried that I wasn't gonna like it because I had a prior camping experience of one night that was bad one night in November in Austria, which was a big mistake. But thanks to Randy and him knowing, okay, and I already told him, look, I, I get cold quickly. He made sure to have the right kind of mattress and sleeping bags available. And if you're already into camping, maybe you already have your own material, but I've never camped before that. It was great because we stayed at three campsites, the one at Spitzkuppe, um, the one at Sesserim, and the one uh Hobas. So Fish River Canyon. If I was going to rank them, then Spitz Coupe would come first, then Hobas, and then the Cesarim one. What I didn't like about the uh, Cesarim one was the bathroom didn't have anywhere where you could keep your stuff. And I felt that we were too close to the other people, so you heard a lot. And even it wasn't crazy busy, right? So I think that's a place harder to have some privacy. Why Spitzkuppe is at number one because it's usually just surrounded by nature, it's perfect. So that's it with camping. Now we're moving on to communication. In terms of communication, uh, a dual SIM phone is very good because I always had my, you know, my original SIM and then I put the SIM of the country where I was in. I bought a SIM card, bought some data, bought some call credit and then I was on the go. So that's the mall, it's part of it. I'm going to shop right and I'm going to go get my SIM card. That's also part of it, like a tower. And then here are some, like, loads of restaurants and whatever. I went across and that's the cafe. Was In some countries the data was very expensive. Namibia, for example, super expensive. Um, Tanzania, uh, I preferred my Vodacom to... Um, I got Airtel last. But in some other countries, I used Airtels, MTN. So these are like some of the providers. I used Lumitel, that was more in Burundi. So I got a SIM. So I have this little bag with a lot of SIM cards. And please bear in mind, do not throw away your SIM card because it's registered to your name and any kind of crazy thing can happen with it and you would be held responsible. Another thing you might want to keep in mind because a lot of people, um, a lot of countries, so like, Say Kenya and Tanzania, they're doing a lot of mobile money. Um, once you activate that, some people are going to try to call you and trick you into something. Just be aware of it. It happened to me in Kenya and in Tanzania. I don't know if it happened in Uganda, but they called saying some funny things. And I was like, so uh, that's it with communication. Shopping, I just mostly went to the normal supermarket. So, for example, in Tanzania, I use a lot of shoppers village market and in kenya carrefour in uganda but they have carrefour in uganda just go to the shopping malls and look for the supermarket there and then in southern africa it was more like spa and shop right and for fruits and veggies i just bought on the roadside there were a lot of kiosks nice oh my god i missed that about eastern africa fruit veggies fresh and crazy you want to do that in eastern africa there are loads of it the avocados are there to die for. We're looking at point eight, healthcare. For healthcare, I did an insurance with STA Travel. Initially, it was 14 months and then I extended it. It was the whole world apart from North America because I wasn't planning to go to North America. What happened here is I got a card that looked like a, an, you know, like an ATM card. So it had a chip and everything. And you can actually pay, pay with it. 
but they only give you the pin when you have something to pay for and you've called to say I'm ill, I need to go to the doctors. I went to the hospital I think five or six times, first time in Syria alone, then in Senegal, then in then in Tanzania, then in Uganda, and then in Zambia. All of these times I went to private hospitals and once to a government hospital, depending on what was best. Again, I read the Google reviews, I checked, you know, I Googled best hospital, blah, blah, blah. I just wanted to make sure I would be getting the right consultation that followed basically what most people were saying um, to pick the hospitals I went to and I can't complain. We're moving on to point nine languages. School. Ishuri. Guys, that is three ways of saying the word alekol. So I said Ishure, that is Kirundi. You said which is Igbo, and he said English school. school. Yeah, voila. <laughs> in terms of languages, I pretty much got along very well with English in most of the places, apart from Tanzania, where the main language is Swahili. So it might be that if you're outside of the big towns, most people don't really speak English. And especially if you're wondering of going hiking to waterfalls and things like that, might be that the people you meet don't speak English. But a few words can help. Habari, habariyaku, habari zazubui, you know, rafiki, asante, karibu. Just a few words can keep you going if you're up and about uh, in Tanzania. And Rwanda, you might be thinking that people speak French. Probably a certain generation, but most times now most of them speak English and or not. <laughs> and if you're closer to the Congolese border, then they speak French. In Burundi, the main language is French, so there it can also be a bit trying. Otherwise, everywhere else, you, you're probably you're fine with English. Last but not the least point, activities. People wanted to know what I did. My first time going to East Africa, I was a bit paranoid about doing safari because I thought, oh my god, it's going to be expensive. So keep an eye open for my budget safari episode where I'm going to talk about how I did the safaris and what it cost. Otherwise, I've already done four videos on four of the different parks I visited in uh, Tanzania. I'm only missing Tarangiri, which will be dropping soon. So as you can already guess, national parks became a thing. I like to think that I became a hobby safari person. So guys, we just started our walking safari in Arusha National Park and here is a group of buffaloes. But where you see the buffaloes, you also... Because I went to, I think, at least 15 national parks. So five in Tanzania and about three in Kenya, about four in Uganda, one in Zambia and another three in Botswana. So I, I did quite a bit of my share of going to national parks and it was fun. I, I have no regrets whatsoever. It was so enriching. You learned so much. The game drives were perfect. I mean in Southern Africa it was trying because they have this thing about the open safari car which I'm not too crazy about in winter. So I did catch a very bad cold in one of them because it was extremely cold in the morning and you're sitting in an open car driving around with not a lot on. So well, that's not too cool with the open safari cars or if you are going in the winter months on safari in Southern Africa, take a proper jacket and, you know, everything you would need in winter. So safari was one of them. If I wasn't going on safari, I was hiking. I hiked a lot in Eastern Africa. Oh my God, beautiful places. Lushoto, Magoroto, the Crater Lakes, Mount Longonot, Hell's Gate, the hike. So many beautiful hikes in um, Burundi. It was actually quite good. I mean, I loved the aspect of going to Lake Ngozi in Tanzania, of going to these natural places where you just wow you're just there and, and you know it was great so i did a lot of that after that if i wasn't doing that then museums i visited a lot of museums i love museums so i went to quite a number of museums in the different countries and if i wasn't going to museums then i was in the cafes i love me a beautiful cafe and a good cappuccino and some pancakes so um yeah i paid for it I loved swimming, especially in uh, hotter climate places, so in Eastern Africa that was a theme. 
I enjoyed the pools, very beautiful pools across Tanzania. In Uganda, I went in Kenya and Diani. Uh, the, the Baba Beach, oh amazing, they have like, I don't know, five pools there uh, and the beach, <laughs> so that was really cool. So that was the pools and another thing I did is some cultural things, so like uh, the Gishora dramas, the Inhora dances, so a few things that I did watch that were big cultural and that was, that was a good experience. Another thing that I did was fish markets. I don't know why I like fish markets. I try to go to fish markets. I eat fish. I like eating fish. I don't really cook it, but I accept shrimps. But I like um, eating fish, so I go to fish markets and just learn about the, the fishes. Yeah. So that's one of the things I, I did. And then if not beaches, just at the beach and chilling. So those are mostly my activities. Did I go to the market? Yes, I went to the market to buy food, but never really just to visit the market because I know what markets look like. So in, in Nigeria, from my experience in Nigeria, so I didn't just really go visit some markets. So friends, we are at the end of our 10 topics. The last thing I want to say is bring some good vibes because some things might not work out the way you expect them to, but just bring, be of good cheer and look for a solution and you'll be fine. So I do hope you've enjoyed this episode. If there's some things that you need me to answer, drop your questions in the comment section. I'll try to answer them. Thank you very much for watching. Yours truly, Liesl81. Mr. Gabby B. Jameson, dedicace pour les mariés.